Five Russian relatives of Boston Marathon bomber Johar Sarnayev are traveling to the U.S. to testify in the sentencing phase of his trial. Taxpayers are funding the family member's trip. Sixteen FBI agents are also assigned to guard them while they are here in the U.S. Let's bring in Jonas Bilbour, a criminal defense attorney. Dan Shore is a former prosecutor. Talk about a fair trial. Uh, we, the American people, are spending this kind of dough to pay for the protection, from the, first of all, the plane tickets, and then the protection of Johar Sarnayev's family members. It cannot be cheap to put 16 FBI agents on round-the-clock detail. No, no, sir. And, you know, but we paid for this whole trial anyway, so this, we're just going to pile this additional expense onto the case. But the part that bothers me the most is... Is it not insane to, to bring family members of a terrorist into the country, number one and number two? I assume none of them is on the no-fly list. They're probably but not, but their testimony, in my opinion, is not going to make or break this case. As I used to tell my clients, if your mother, your grandmother, your sister, your brother can't say something nice about you, nobody can. This defendant would be better off if independent third parties were trying to help him escape the death penalty, but not his relatives. It does, Dan, show that he's got people who love him out there in the world, right? Right. We have to look at the bigger picture here. It's not just about this defendant. It's about our criminal justice system asking the jury to agree to execute somebody. So we have to give them every possibility that they want to bring in people who are going to be favorable to them. Now, none of these witnesses are going to say he didn't commit these crimes, but the defense only needs to have one juror disagree with the death penalty, and then his life will be spared and he'll have life in prison. So if they could get some sympathy through family members, that's one of the avenues that the defense is going to pursue. But this is a death penalty qualified jury. They have all mm -hmm. said that under the circumstances, under the right circumstances, they could vote for the death penalty, right, Jonah? That's what they all, they have to say that in order to get in panel. I believe the strategy is, as Dan said, if, if they can just convince one of those jurors to not vote for death, then you don't have a unanimous jury and he's not going to get put to death. Just one. You don't have to convince all of them. So the, the, the attempt goes on to present this young man as just a misguided youth who was under the sway of his older brother. Right. He's misguided. He's under the influence of his brother, and that's why he did these. Now, on the prosecution side, of course, he was very deliberate, Jokar Zarnayev. He planted the bomb near people. He obviously knew what he was doing. He's a smart person by different accounts. And now the question for the jury is, do we sentence him to death or life in prison? And the defense is going to say, we're not asking you to set him free. We're just asking you not to execute him. Let's... Um uh, turn our attention to Colorado, where the trial of James Holmes is underway. Uh, Jonna, the defense there, I'm sorry, the, well, the prosecution really has to prove that this guy was sane at the time he committed these acts. How are they doing on that score? Well, first of all, this is really unusual because Colorado is one of just a handful of states, I believe it's 14, that require the prosecution to have the burden of proving sanity at the time of a trial. Versus in, in all other states that have the death penalty, it's on the burdens on the defendant to prove that they were insane at the time. What the prosecution has to do here is show that all of the planning and all of uh, what, what Mr. Holmes did the day that he killed 12 people and injured 70 was not part of a psychotic episode, air quotes, but rather um, purposefully done, plotted and planned so that he knew the difference between right and wrong when he committed the act. What about all the planning? Doesn't that suggest the, the work of a, of a sane mind? I mean, there was all kinds of pre-planning that went into this. Right. This is not a very strong defense. Insanity here is a defense of last resort where there's no other legal or factual defense. The defendant put himself in body armor. That shows that he's thinking he's doing something wrong that there might be some retaliation for. He targeted specific theater goers, shooting them as they were leaving the theater. He booby trapped his apartment so law enforcement might get hurt entering his apartment. These are all thought out crimes, very inconsistent with someone who's insane. All right. Well, we will continue to watch both of these stories. I know that in the Boston case, the prosecution asked the judge to please let the family members testify quickly so we can put those FBI agents back out on the streets and no longer have them protecting the Tsarnaev clan. Jonas Spilbor, Dan Shore, thank you both. Thank, thank you. you.